Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get some leather going on. The first thing that I'm going to do is just remind you that I've got my object loaded. I'm in the shading viewport. I've got viewport shading enabled and I've already applied a basic principled shader. Within that shader, I'm going to change some settings. Specular, I'm going to increase to 0.6. Roughness, I'm going to decrease to 0.35. Uh, and I think that's about it. Okay, so let's start getting things going on. So we're going to need a color ramp. So press Shift A and search for a color ramp. Plop that down somewhere here. Pop it in here. Plug that color into the base color. And we're going to make a couple of changes here. We're going to change the color mode to HSL. And we're going to change this to counterclockwise. For the first color, we're going to change that to 0 0.064 hue, 0 0.977 saturation and 0 0.078 value. So that's kind of a brownie color at the moment. And it's looking pink here because it's blending from brown to pink. But what we're going to do is actually change this to black. So we've now got a very, very dark brown going on here. I'm going to change the position of this to about 0.95. I say about, I will change it to 0.95. And then to mess this up, we're going to get us a Veroni texture. Veroni, 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 whatever you want to call it. Plug the distance from that into the factor of the color ramp. And you can see that's sort of separating out the colors now. We've got light browns and dark browns going on. Uh, we're not going to change any of these settings here. What we are going to do though is add a second color ramp just below the first and plug the distance from the Voronoi texture into the factor of this. We're going to flip the colors so we've got white at the start, black at the end, and we'll leave the color modes as they are. We're going to get a bump node and put that in just about here. We're going to plug the normal from that into the normal of the principled shader. We're going to change the strength to 0.2 and the distance to 0.4. Now we need a noise texture. Plot that just below the color ramp. And we're going to mix the color ramp and the noise texture. So we're going to get a mix RGB. And take the color from the color ramp into color one. And the color from the noise texture into color two. The color from that is going to get plugged into the height of the bump map. So you can see now we've got this sort of cell fracturing going on. For the scale on the noise texture, we'll set it at 2, the detail at 15, the roughness at 1. Okay, so we've got a good old amount of texture, but this cell fracturing is way too big, so we're going to need to do something about that. So we'll drag this off to the right. Next up, we need another Voronoi texture. We need a noise texture. We need a texture coordinate. And we need a mix RGB shader 
and we need a math node. So I chuck these all on at once and now I'll connect them up and make the settings. So we're going to connect the position from the Voronoi texture to the other Voronoi texture via the vector. I'm going to connect the value from the math node into the scale. I'm going to change the setting here to smooth F1. Change the math node to power and set that at 16 for the base and 1.65 for the exponent. We're then going to take the object from the texture coordinate, put it in the vector of the noise texture and into color two of the mix node. And the color from the noise texture is going to go in color one. Okay, so that's going there. The color from this mix shader is going to go into the vector of this Voronoi texture and you can see how it's making a difference each time I plug something in. We're also going to take the value from the power node into the scale of this texture and there you can see it's kind of done a lot towards giving us um, what we need. I'm actually going to change this Voronoi texture back to F1 and it was this one that I wanted as smooth F1 and you can see the difference that that's made. Now for this noise texture we're going to increase the scale to 10 and the detail to 15 and for the mix shader increase that to 0.9 The smoothness on this Voronoi texture, we're going to decrease to 0.35 and we'll leave the randomness on both at one. And there we should have everything that we need. So just before I send it to render, this would be the color if you wanted to change the overall color of the uh, leather. And these are the settings in the power where if you change them, they will change the sort of size of the texturing. So muck around with those if you need to. Won't really change much if you change other things or it might just make it look like something completely different. Worth having a play if you fancy, but otherwise I'll send this off to render and I'll just remind you I'm using a thousand samples uh, and the cycles render engine. If you've got other render engines or other uh, whatevers, feel free. I'm not sure it'll guarantee the same results, but it's worth a go using what you've got before you think about spending thousands on an upgrade. Okay, and there we have our natural leather texture. As I said, you can change the overall color, but that's a very good representation of natural leather to me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of these Blender tutorials. In the meantime, thanks for watching.